So, in this semi-fictional but very true set of letters, the person writes back, intrigued, and says, but our Quaker is Christian. And this is actually one of my favorite chapters, and it was sort of the most challenging to write. But I, I, I just stuck to stories, so I talk about sort of how I was learning about Quaker faith and practice as a teenager, and I want to find this right place. Okay, so, so I asked one of the older Galesburg Quakers about what it meant that Quakers seemed to put their main emphasis on following Jesus rather than on believing the many specific claims about him that most people felt were essential to being Christians. This guy laughed and said that he had read the Bible several times and noticed that whenever Jesus was asked how to live a faithful spiritual life, he never answered, you must believe that my mother is a virgin and I am God. <laughs> Instead, my new friend said, Jesus would answer all such questions with such teachings as, be loving as God is loving. For this man, following the way of Jesus was the very essence of the Quaker movement which he described as a spiritual community that encourages its members to live spirit-led lives of simplicity, integrity, equality, nonviolence, community involvement, and unity with nature. I was touched and inspired by this conversation. My new mentor also explained to me that there are three kinds of loving talked about in the Jewish and Christian scriptures that have always been important to Loving the Spirit of God with all one's heart and strength. Loving our neighbors, including our enemies, as ourselves. And loving and caring for God's good earth. This, he added, is the prophetic Jewish wisdom that Jesus taught and embodied in his own life and ministry. This is also the teaching of George Fox, one of the early English leaders of the Religious Society of Friends. As my new mentor showed me, these three forms of faithful loving were spelled out right on page two of Fox's journal. As someone raised by my dad to love wilderness and the natural world, I was particularly struck that as far back as the 1600s, Quakers were talking about loving the unity of creation. That's a direct quote from page two. And urging people to avoid, quote, devouring the creation in violation of the covenant of love. And so then I go talk about actually reading the Bible and being shocked at the spiritual wisdom um, and the, the passion for social justice in, in, in Jesus. But I also talk about that in the time of early friends, many people who were considered sort of orthodox Christians denied that friends were um, Christian. And so I sort of leave it um, kind of open. Well, it depends on what you define as Christianity. And I lay out some thing, and I have a story that I won't read, but about when I was 15 and living in DeKalb, um, I'm walking down the street, and a street evangelist comes up to me and hands me a brochure and goes, are you a Christian? And, you know, being somebody who is getting, you know, the spiritual practice of meeting for worship, I'm starting to read the Bible and finding spiritual ancestors in there that mean a lot to me, I go... I didn't go, but I, I felt like saying, hell yeah! <laughs> but so I said, yes, but then it just, we, he, we talk, and it's clear that his version of Christianity, I'm a heretic. And at first, I, I'm all uptight about that, because heretics don't tend to fare well. Um, and certainly not in the early days of the Quaker movement. But I calm down, because he's not in charge of anything. And he's not going to hurt me, and so I become interested. And so we have a talk um, that is included in the book. Am I guessing I have five more minutes? Yes, you're good at this. Okay. <laughs>